Hello, welcome back. I'm Margaret Ryle and I would like to welcome you to the 11th tutorial on writing your action research report. These have been a series of online tutorials to help you learn how to do and share action research. This tutorial is really focused on helping you learn how to write up your action research report. And I know some of you will be thinking, well, I've done the action research. I've learned from it. Why do I have to write it up? Especially those that aren't part of an academic program, you might be saying, okay, I'm finished now. I'm going to start by trying to lay out a case for why is it important for you to write your action research report. It doesn't have to just be words, but words are a really important part of the action research. There are three reasons why I think it's really important that you write up your action research report, regardless if you're in a program or doing this on your own. The first one is that it deepens your own knowledge. The second one is that it engages you in a knowledge building conversation. And the third is that it extends beyond your own personal learning network. So let's look at each of these in turn to see what I mean by these. Writing is an important way of externalizing your thinking. So we have lots of ideas, um, lots of things that we think about and they come in and out of our mind at different times and sometimes we're more eloquent than other times. Uh, by capturing the words that we think convey the meaning and then organizing them in a sequence that helps people other than yourselves make sense of the ideas is a great exercise in meaning making. I assure you, you will learn more about what you did by writing about it than perhaps even being involved in it. New insights will appear and better integration and memory of what it was that you did will be part of your, part of what you learned from this action research. I know that some of you will say, well, I'll just remember it. And I want to share you a little bit about how the brain works in terms of memory. We don't remember everything. We remember traces of a memory. That means that we, we place just enough information that we will know how to reconstruct it into a story. When we tell that story, we add to the memory traces the things that um, we think are important. And then the next time we try to remember it, we'll remember a trace from the actual event and a trace from the telling of the story. The more times you tell a story, the less accurate the story becomes because the less able you are to get to the original memory trace. So why is this important to writing? Well, when you write down what you're thinking now, the words stay there. They don't get they don't change over time. The meaning that you give to them may change over time, but the words themselves stay there in a record that you and other people can explore. By externalizing your ideas into words, onto paper, or onto the computer, you place them in a way that you can go back to and think about and have a conversation with yourself about what you did in, at some future point. So that's the first reason. This is important for your own learning. The second reason is it's an important way of sharing your ideas with others. So when we say we're doing action research, we're engaging in a process of research. So what is research? Many of you, when you thought of research, maybe before you did your action research, your first impression when you think of research is something that you do when you go to the library and look up a topic and try to learn from what other people have written. That's really, unfortunately, this is the only form of research we teach in schools. The second part, the flip side, the yin-yang of research, is where you move into the future. How can I learn more about this topic by investigating, by exploring, by asking questions, by watching, by setting up experiments. All of these ways of trying to find out more information is also called research. So we have this ongoing process. I like to think of it as a conversation or a dialogue of the past with the future. So past researchers lay down 
plans, ideas, thoughts, theories about what might happen. Current researchers generate plans. They go out and use these plans to look and see what's happening. And then those plans get turned into intellectual artifacts, things that other people can use to start their journey. And, and the third reason is that it allows for you to share beyond your personal learning network. So when you engage in research, you place your work in the public setting where other people can find it, where other people can learn from it, people that you don't know. This is important because we sometimes have particular attitudes about work that's done by people that we know. But when you're an unknown person, it is the work that they're really focusing on. And they are free to make judgments about how valuable, um, whether or not they felt like your methods worked to get the information, and whether or not there might be some other way or some other clue that you've missed that they might want to explore. So it allows for this extension of your ideas to people that you don't know, and even extension beyond time. You know, when you're no longer at your place of work, your ideas still stay there to help new people who come there. It allows you to be a researcher, and we'll talk about the identity of a researcher in the next tutorial. But for now, I'll just mark it as something really important. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how you write your research report. I hope I've convinced you that it is important to write about what you've done or to create a website about what you've done. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the activities that I've set up in tutorial 11. So the first activity is to create a, a, a one-page brochure, front and back, that describes the process of your action research, the cycles, uh, some insights that you've learned. And if you do this in a one-page way, it, it forms a kind of outline for you to organize your thinking as you go to write your longer document. It's also a very useful thing to be able to give to people to invite them to come and see your work online. So I put a template in, and in creating the template for the brochure, I realized that templates are probably useful not just for the brochure, but for lots of the activities. So I've gone back through the tutorials, and I'm almost finished creating templates for each of the activities so that as you're working forward, you will come to the point of writing your research report with all of your work in one place. And so that brings us to the second activity, which is writing your report. And you can use uh, graphics, you can use words, you can use charts and diagrams. You know, it's really a great time to be writing. I, I uh, still have typewriters sitting in my office and I took it out because my daughter was interested in it. And boy, was that a hard way to write. And those keys just stick. Um, you can't get your ideas, you can't get anything other than words, and the words are pretty hard to get to be consistent. So. Uh, be happy that you have at your disposal all sorts of technology tools that can help you create not only a document of what you did, but also a method for sharing it with both those people you know and people who you don't know but might know in the future. The second activity is using the template to write up your action research. And once you've, once you've thought about the words that you want to use, then you really might want to think about the images and how to put it together in, say, an online portfolio of your work. And you'll find some suggestions about how to use the tools to create an effective story online about your action research. In the resources, I suggest that you start by reading some reports that other people have written. It's always helpful to have a model in your mind as you start on your own uh, investigations. And I also provide some rubrics. Rubrics are a tool to see if you have all the components in a write-up. And I know some of you uh, will be writing your action research reports for your MA or your PhD. And in those cases, you'll want to follow both kinds of rubrics that I've developed and the ones that are developed in your program. But even if you're not writing for a program, you might want to look at the rubrics that I put and use them as a guide for the kinds of things that you want to make sure you cover in your description of your action research. I also include some resources for um, web design and also for conference presentations, for writing for journals, 
and for staging exhibitions of your work so that you can share what you've done uh, locally with the people in your in your workplace. So that's the, that's it for tutorial 11. I hope you enjoy the writing process. I hope you find it rewarding and that it helps you develop some new insights about your actual research that perhaps you didn't have before you started. And I hope you'll all come back for the final tutorial where we really will explore what it means to become an action researcher. So have fun. See you next time. Bye for now.